because we don't have who's the light? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Christ. We don't have Jesus in our life, so we're sitting in the dark. And how many of you have had people know Jesus Christ come by and you kind of give them the, you know what? Anybody ever do that to anybody? I had a guy when I was in the fire department for years was telling me about Jesus. I had him jacked up against the wall. I had him every which way. Oh, I don't want to hear that stuff no more. And the funny thing about it is when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, guess who was in the room? Leo was in the room. <laughs> God's got a funny way of bringing things back around. You know what I mean? Yeah. From having him jacked up on the wall saying, don't do that no more, to getting baptized in the Holy Ghost with each other. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> right. God's cool. Yeah. But we're born into sin. How many of you know that? We try to fill our hearts with relationships, booze, drugs, sex, religion, money, work, vehicles, houses, clothes, shopping. How many of you all tried any of that? The rest of you are lying. We all tried something. If it ain't on that list, you tried something else. Come on. And no matter how much stuff we pour into ourselves that way, guess what? It never fills the hole. In fact, sometimes the hole gets bigger because we get deeper into mm -hmm. all this stuff and all that does is keep leading us, what, farther and farther away from Jesus. We're unbelieving or rebellious. There's some of us still rebellious in here. Didn't hear me say that? <laughs> some of you are still rebellious in here. <laughs> no. Disbelief of the supernatural or belief in many forms of the supernatural got to believe that there's a different God than on me. Me and Shirley. <laughs> if I don't remember, that's Shirley McClain. Anyway, some of you are too young for that. Yep. Some of you are too old for that too, probably. Nope. Believe in one God, but there's many ways to get to him. You ever think about that? I know a bunch of guys that are, you know. I believe in God, but there's all sorts of ways to get to it. Anger towards Christians or the church? Anybody was there before? Confusion about God, Jesus, the church, ignorance regarding biblical truth. We're spiritually blind. Belief that the answers that, are, that we are seeking lie in worldly prestige, power, and fame. Belief that they are as good as anyone else, so they don't need a Savior. I must be alright. Belief that they have done too much wrong, so fear they can't be saved. Anybody ever been in that boat? So what do you think, what do you think their spiritual needs are? How about a secure relationship with a mature believer? One that won't judge them. <coughs> think about this. I didn't have anybody like that. I always had everybody tell me I was going to hell. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be cool that you as the most mature <laughs> believer got a hold of an unbeliever and just started, hey man, it's all right. You know, God still loves you. I got one friend that I will just, I'm going to work on him until the cows come home. <laughs> he's sunk. It's either... He's going to get saved or he's going to hear it until the day he dies. And I'm going to be his friend. I don't care. Some of us mature believers need to get a hold of some unsaved, spiritually blind, spiritually dead people and show them through your lifestyle that Jesus really is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Amen. How about a picture of the real Jesus <coughs> lived out in front of them? Uh-oh. That means you have to do something. That means who has to do something? We. you got to do something. How about giving them answers and evidence for Christianity? I was talking to somebody tonight that you know, doesn't believe that God's word is written by God. Or written by man. Well, that's true, but it's written by man, but it's inspired by God. By God. How many of you have ever got to somebody and you just think, man, there's no hope for them, sir? <laughs> there's no hope. 
And you never offer them an invitation to receive Christ. I'm going to throw Miss Marjorie under the bus. <coughs> Miss Marjorie, how many people, she's not listening to me, how many people come through your yard that you never talk to them about Jesus? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> There ain't nobody that goes through her yard, through her alley, or by her street. If she's got eyeballs on them, they're going to hear about Jesus. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I don't care if they're up on her roof, working on her roof. She's going to be standing down there. You ain't getting up on my roof until I pray that you, in case you fall off of there. <laughs> True story, right? Stand up and tell them here, girl. Come on. You got to stand up so they can hear you. How many of you said that before you really got saved? I've said that. 
Uh, I'm not a Christian because Christians are responsible for all the wars in history. Okay? I've heard people say that. And if you really look at it, most of the wars are caused over religion anyway. Yeah. But they blame the Christians for it. <laughs> I've been a good person, so I'll be okay. You know what? Some of the things that come out of their mouth, and I read this to you last week, but I'm going to hit you one more time. Luke 6, 45 says, The upright, honorable, and intrinsically good man, out of the good treasure stored in his heart, produces what is upright, honorable, and intrinsically good. And the evil man, out of the evil storehouses, brings forth that which is depraved, wicked, and intrinsically evil, for out of the abundance of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. So you know what? You can really tell where somebody's at is what they are saying. I got time. I helped move my son-in-law and daughter into a place in San Diego. And... Uh, had a big old 30 foot long trailer, 45, I don't know what, it was a huge trailer I had pulled down there with all their stuff in it. And he had gotten a couple of his friends to come and help. And as we're moving things in, it's F and this and F and that and rotten, no good, and yeah, F and that, you know, F and this about. And, and I'm like, man, man, this is my ears, it's hurting here. But I'm not going to say nothing, you know, we're doing and F and this and all that. And finally, I couldn't take it any longer. And I said, dude. Can you just move it down just, you know, maybe every fifth word instead of every other word? And he kind of looked at me and said, what? I said, I'm a, I'm a pastor. And I said, you know, I'm not too much on the cussing. I said, you can cuss. I'm all, but every other word, he goes, oh, dude, I'm enough in Christian too. <laughs> Dropping it, the F bomb all the time. But when we're by ourselves, mm -hmm. never. 